Good morning everybody and welcome to Lithuania. It is the European Ultimate Indoor Championships. Originally penciled in for the start of the season. Had to push it back a little bit just to make dates work. But we are delighted to be here in the Baltics to bring you the first European National Indoor event. I am very excited. Benjamin Reese here with you in the booth and our first game today is Latvia versus Lithuania 2. We bring you action all day today from the Open Division. We have pools A and D for you. One of the logistical, uh, I don't want to say issues, but considerations you have to take in when you run a, a big indoor tournament with three divisions is that you're kind of a little bit pushed for hall space. So a rather neat solution has been found in that the divisions are split up across four venues and we have half of the Open Division here with us in Prinai this morning. Uh, there are, as you may have seen in the tidy little opener as well, uh, a few other venues that we are using, uh, Birstonas, uh, Costa, and we have the Ulti TV crew in Galiva as well. Delighted to be uh, here working with the ZoomTV.LT staff who've been very friendly this morning, getting everything locked and loaded and ready to go. And very excited to be bringing you some indoors action. Lavria, of course, probably the heavy favourites going into this game. There is the Hooter to signal the game start. 42-minute games here at the venue. And we are underway here for EUIC 2022. And Malder is trying to come through the back there to get the block, but uh, it looks like there is going to be a foul called here by Thomas Malinauskas. And it's going to be contested, so sent back to the previous thrower. Getting ready to check the disc in is Elksnitis. Back in play and underway here. We know what this Latvia side is all about, regardless of the surface, indoors, outdoors, beach. As more Kunas making the catch there, trying to get the one out to space. Tiaskas back into the centre. Here's a blade slung deep over the head of Garvey. And more Kunas got two hands to it at the back of the end zone, but just came in maybe a little bit too hot to handle for him. But otherwise, Lithuania 2, they showed some good stuff on that first possession. Martin Kasparans picks up for the Latvians. Nice little break towards that far sideline for Elksnizis. Maldoris dishes off. Back to Kasparans. They've got the isolation with Garvey in the end zone. And then flowing it, Maldoris bursts up line. Continuation, Garvey times that cut in the end zone so well. And Latvia take the lead here. Break on the game's first point makes it one to nothing. Of course, we've seen this that the inside over the past few years come up through the youth ranks. We've seen Salas Bills have success at the club level, both outdoors and on the beach as well. And we've seen a, a contingent of this that the inside have, uh, go all the way to fourth place in the World Club Championships out in Cincinnati earlier this summer as part of the Mooncatchers ros roster. And we'll actually be seeing a lot of those players later today when Belgium take the field. That disc is tipped and couldn't quite be rescued at a second attempt by a Lithuanian player. Gussars. Bernans deep. He's looking for Madaris, but 
Did not get that one right. No connection there. As Maldoris takes his cap off. So disc back into the hands of the Lithuanians. We'll also be seeing Lithuania's first team later today as well. Towards the back, Maldoris tried to come off and get the poach block in there, but just crammed it in. Malinauskas on the sideline, zinged into the centre of the pitch. Mokunas. Latvian, uh, the Lithuanians, excuse me, trying to work this quickly around the back, but just came out too quickly out of the hands there. Searching for Kalinas, and will give the disc back to the Latvians. Lithuania, one of two countries to enter two teams into this tournament alongside the Latvians, which A, helps get us a nice uh, 16 team division, but also I think gives a lot of players a chance to grow and learn on the international stage as Gussars shooting for the end zone there. Finds Emil's Elksnitis, and that'll make it 2 0 to Latvia. It was a little bit of a sketchy moment in there, a disc that was bobbled, but good focus, good awareness as well, you have to say, to make sure that they're ready to go to pick up the second pass. these two countries neighbours up here in the Baltic states so the pull comes up from the Latvians caught at the back of the end zone by Kalinas knifing it to Vaznis here's Tiauskas and a straight run through there into the hands of Kasparans who's picking it up on the end zone line just going to go backwards to Podgorskis. There's the hat there. They wanted the knife over the top. Well, Olovskis wanted the knife over the top at least, but instead just a simple pop up line there to Garvey. Of course, the... Uh, I was going to say American import. That implies that he's uh, not a permanent fixture of this Latvian roster, which he very much is at this point, been based out there for a number of years now. Uh, it's, it's five on the line, lads. Got there in the end. Everyone's kind of waiting for something. I'm not sh quite sure what. But whatever the delay was, they've got over it, and we're now back in play. It's supposed to take a maximum of 35 seconds between points. And there's potentially the option to jam that down the line. But I think Kozlowskas was wise to look away from it. Nice inside shape on that one. Tiauskas. Back to Kalinas. Kalinas. Oh, that is an ambitious break. He really fired it across the field was looking for Lankauskas. I like the idea because there was that little bit of separation. Using the inside backhand was a nice way of trying to hit that shot, but just maybe put too much zip on it. Jorgensen's picking up, looking for Tom Zappeltinch, and that one is bang on the money. One of the advantages of playing indoors is that with the smaller field sizes, 40 meters by 20 meters including of course the end zones is the recommended size although they can be a little bit bigger smaller just based on of course what facilities you have available it, with the smaller pitches and of course indoors there's no winds to worry about no rain don't have to worry about you know slipping on the turf either especially in the winter which you I must admit out here you certainly would do with the heavy snowfall that we've had it means that you can really you can hit the end zone from any part of the field and Jurgensen showed it there, picking up from just outside his own end zone. As that pull is caught right at the back there by Kalinas. A pull that is perfectly judged and weighted. Pishkus. Axnis is on the force, just having to play it around the back at the moment. Malinaus Gas looking underneath. That's a really nice catch stuck there by Tiaus Gas. And oh, there's going to be a stoppage here travel I think maybe bringing that disc back into play just going to make sure that Tiaskas gets his foot where it needs to be resets to Kalinas 
not really had any luck trying to get players open deep and it feels like the offense is really focused on working it underneath at the moment on the far sideline across the halfway line now but happy to take the reset into the backfield to reset that still count indoors of course still count eight rather than ten to make up for the uh, the more compressed nature of the contest still count rising a little bit but Chiaskas gets the reset off Pishkus he finds Serpatowskas they've got the one-on-one -on -one in the end zone you can just see there Gussars trying to backpedal to stop that end zone shot but instead they're going to be able to jam it down the line for the first point of the game Serpatowskas staying patient reading the field well and you can see their focus on that bracket in the end zone and that's a cheeky little cut up the line there from Pishkus to get the first Lithuanian score of the tournament, in fact. So it's Latvia 4, Lithuania 2, 1. Very exciting opportunity here some of the younger, less experienced players for the second side for Lithuania as you see here and Latvia who are also at the tournament to get experience on that international stage. First time actually we're seeing the Latvians begin on offense. Although you'd imagine that they'll have set O and D lines in mind but they'll probably rotate through those quite a lot. Jorgensen's looking for the one-on-one -on -one and Bernans shakes his defender out of his boots burning him to this sideline. And the cheeky little blade over the top there from Jorgensen's finds Yanis Bernans you just see here as soon as the defender he loses sight of Bernans in the end zone so he turns around to look at it and as soon as he does so that's when Bernans waits and strikes like that Cobra taking his opportunity with the defender's hips the wrong way Burns him towards this near sideline. Defender has to turn all the way around. And there's nothing really he could do. Pulls a slightly awkward field. But I, I think he caught it in the end zone. So he has to take it in play. And we are checked in. As that disc goes underneath here to Lankowskis. Again, looking for a little bit of inside shape on these throws. Teslavichus. Now, Jaskas. Ooh. Maybe a little bit of a bump as he came through. But nice slap of hands there from Garvey. And Lithuania, after a, I must admit, an inauspicious start to this game, finding a little bit of offensive rhythm there. 5-2, the Latvians lead. It's usually a little bit of a bone of contention in the, uh, among the Ulti TV crew about whether we go for a count up or count down style clock. But with indoors, when, uh, with those buzzer beaters often quite prevalent, although the rules are slightly different out here. Going for a countdown clock. As that one, that man is down the far sideline. A little bit of toe drag swag there from Jurgensen's. Continuing his strong game. A couple of assists already. And you can add a goal to that tally now as well. Makes it Latvia 6, Lithuania 2. And those of you more familiar for watching outdoors or beach, you might think, oh, the game's only been going 10 minutes or so. How can it already be 6-2? That is the pace at which indoors happens. Not a lot of downtime between points. And the points themselves generally can be ruthlessly quick and efficient. Gussars with the pull. Fielded again at the back of the end zone by Kalinas. Doesn't like the option he sees downfield there. Underneath back in Kalinas's hands. And able to sneak through that inside shot towards the end zone. Beautifully done. Again, as we mentioned, not the best start to this game. But Lithuania have found a little bit of rhythm now. 
that time lovely inside flick scything across making it 6-3 it's about quarter past 8 here local time in Lithuania early start and we've got a lot of ultimate action for you this weekend two pitches today three pitches tomorrow all of them 8 till 8 local time that's a grand total of 60 games as Bananz hammers over the top and Bananz to Orlovskis is on unstoppable at times it seems we just set up this isolation very clearly they've got the one on one in the end zone and just sit that hammer over the top towards the break side and Orlovskis was never going to drop that one this Latvian unit looking locked and loaded here offensively turned it over just the once so far the Latvians on that second point of the game it would have been a while since the Lithuanians turned it as they throw it into Maldoris who's waiting there quick scuba towards the break side and it's rifled in there Gussars seeing his spot and wasting no time in getting in as well you see here just a, maybe a bit of an overthrow Madaris is waiting in that space and Gussars really pings that one into Emil Elksnitis who catches his second goal of the game makes an 8-3 lead there is a two minute half time at nine points as well by the way and I think we might be seeing that sooner rather than later Nice catch, high over the head there. Lithuanians clearly keen to get the disc in play quickly. Breaking the force, blading across. Again, I haven't really seen a huge deep element to the Lithuanian offence. Everything seems to be having to go underneath. That's a nice reaching snag there made by Kalinas. Here's the lefty, Cheaskas. As the hammer over the top. That time they got the isolation working nice and cleanly. And Kalinas picks up his second assist of the game. Finding Lucas Morkunas. You can see just taking off from that far sideline. Defenders maybe a little bit on the heels there, Gussars. Wasn't quite expecting that. Maybe wanted a bit more communication. That shot was going to go up. So Latvia receiving now with a chance to take us into half. Lovely little inside backhand there. Abotinch underneath the Roberts Apinis. Bananz catching under a little bit of pressure but not really flustered. Underneath to Abotinch. Here's Podgurskis. Still got that one-on-one -on -one in the end zone. Olovskis says, nope, let's go backwards. Apinis just waiting for the defender to look the other way and sneaks that one in there, floating it towards the break side. That's the hooter that signals it will be half time here. Can you see everything getting a little bit clustered and congested downfield? Lithuania have that defender poaching in that lane. And so they take the reset back to happiness. And when the defender comes out to try and put the force on, they throw it right into the space that he vacated. A little bit of damned if you do, damned if you don't there perhaps for the Lithuanians seeing some of the highlights from that first half there was the bobble that was rescued and quickly fired into the end zone oh, a cheeky little push actually to that far side there for Garvey I love that deep shot now from Jurgensens that found Abeltinch again stretching the field there but the Lithuanians after a rough start have picked themselves up a little bit found some rhythm on offence was a 4-0 run from Latvia to start the game and the teams have traded out since then. I think the Latvians would probably like to be creating a little bit more defensive pressure. But, do have to credit this Lithuanian second team because 
they have begun to found that to begun to find that fire a little bit. That was a lovely inside shot. Seeing all the pictures courtesy of the Zoom TV crew doing a bang up job here. I mean that is lightning quick off the turn isn't it? Giving them no possible chance to set. This was a nice end zone isolation they got set up with the hammer over the top and this is a replay of that final point going into half. As soon as that defender comes out of there, uh, Gizis Pishkus, they immediately just almost dismissively float that backhand into space towards that far sideline. For the score, you hear there the hooter that signals we're ready to get the second half underway. The two teams taking to their positions. Latvians and the Lithuanian first team that we'll see a little bit later as well. Two of the uh, maybe hot favourites for this tournament. Not just the more local advantage, but I think also the fact that it's been known that, that the Baltic winters can be inhospitable at times and it's not great conditions to play outdoors in so you end up playing a lot of indoors and that works to your advantage in these sorts of tournaments here's Jorgensen's catching the pull and instantly banging it deep to Orlovskis what a grab that is from Arvid Orlovskis because Jorgensen's certainly asked a fair amount of his receiver there but you see him take off defender tries to come back and cover maybe could have had a bit of help from his deeper teammates there but he springs up so early reaching grab with the right hand and you see there that first point of contact that left foot very clearly in bounds there's the athleticism that has made Olofskis such a formidable opponent not just in Europe but across the world this year Malderis with the pull uh, I think that's the first time that they've kind of got the pulling a bit wrong and Malderis puts his hand up, signals in apology and then I give Chiaskas a chance to bring the disc in from the brick mark underneath to Malinauskas back to Chiaskas, oh thought he was going to try and cram that one down the line but instead taking the reset back to Thomas Malinauskas Still count rising, going towards the far side. You can see Madaris getting maybe a little bit creative there, not sticking tight, trying to find the opportunities for those poach blocks. As Gussars gets his hand caught in the cookie jar on the force. Uncontested foul will send the disc back. Still count to zero, which is very valuable with an only eight still count indoors. Here's the blade that Domantas Kalinas catches. That one's a little bit low, and low throws indoors can be dangerous as Emil Elksnitis proves there, running through to get the block. Chance for the Latvians to extend their advantage here. Gussars picking up, taking that free swing to Kasparans. Garvey comes underneath. Poach, and he recognises it, swings to Kasparans. Kasparans to the end zone for Malderis. And he toes it inbounds at the back corner of the end zone. Seems like that half-time break has not done the Latvians any harm. Kicked it up and maybe a gear since the interval. And a brilliantly well-weighted blade. Again, you see there Malderis very clearly getting that first point of contact in bounds. 11-4, the Latvians lead. Our schedule today alternates. Uh, all the even-numbered hours local time, you have action from Pool A. And the odd-numbered hours, you'll have action from Pool D. So we'll be seeing them up next. Open pools B and C are at a different venue. And you can see women's action as well today. Oh, the bobble just about caught in bounds there. Good focus and good presence of mind to make sure that they're not getting that contact when that foot is over the line. He's just with a low throw that's kept up by Malinauskas. Kalinas clearly didn't like that option and instead goes back to Malinauskas shooting that one in there and an outstretched hand from Kazimiras Chialskas. He's going to make that one stick for the score. You can have a look at it again now on the replay just squeezing that one 
towards the far sideline. And again, this is quite tight coverage, but I have to say, really good catch under tight pressure there. As you can see, the Lithuanian coaches in the background just giving a little bit of extra instruction. Jurgensen's with that mullet catching the pull underneath to Adeltic. Here's Betmanis. Reckoners win that blue headband. Back to Jorgensen's. Roberts Apinis towing the sideline, as does Orlovskis. He's looking towards the end zone, but both players cutting towards the same space, so he's swinging across. Betmanis with the blade to the back of the end zone, and Tom's Abeltinc is so reliable in that spot, and he makes it 12-5 to Latvia. Not the cleanest we've seen the offense there from the Latvians. Happy to reset the disc, but two players in the end zone and both clearly of the same hive mind because they <laughs> cut to the same space at exactly the same time. And that necessitated that swing across the pitch so they could have a chance to make sure everyone was getting on the same page, opening up that space. Kalinas starts by swinging across the end zone. That one ooh, was a little bit off target. Kaslaskas couldn't bring it in. First pass is a reset back to Kasparans. Kasparans finds Garvey. Garvey with the blade. Slings that one in to Didzis Maldaris. He's going to get himself a little <laughs> well-earned rest in the seats on the sidelines. Making it 13-5 Latvia. I think I'm allowed to call him Ulti TV's own Didzis Malderis, given that he was part of the commentary crew for Tom's tourney in Bruges earlier this year. Pischkus. Getting that one to the outside shoulder, and a good job it was, because otherwise Gussars was there waiting. So Petauskas has to stop himself quickly to avoid charging into the seats there. Good body control from Oremas. So Petauskas, and he's looking for the hammer over the top. Oh, I thought that shot was good. Just agonizingly out of the reach. Gussars is looking to go coast to coast towards the back of the end zone. And I'll tell you what, he judged that one beautifully, finding Eriks Podgorskis, making it 14-5. The Latvians putting on a little bit of a show now. And I mean, this is ruthless just get it in quickly take the swing while they're not looking it means that Gussars has no pressure on that throw and just sits it there over the top maybe utilizing that high mass height mismatch a little bit there brought down by Podgurskis for the score if you want a good example of the depth of this Latvian roster Everyone has re uh, everyone on the team has registered uh, at least a goal or an assist in this game. They're getting contributions from up and down as that is a straight run through from Olofskis. He's picking it up on the end zone line. And he's looking for options. And oh, it was a little bit behind Abeltins. Nice snap reactions there. Olofskis, two players in the end zone. He wants to force it in. No, he doesn't. Back to Kasparans. Kasparans is going to sling it across. And Kasparans is going to rack up the assist to Bruno Jorgensen's. 15-5. Couple of points away from victory. Latvia's wild things out there. This is one of the advantages of playing indoors is that a lot is outdoors. I think teams really don't want to necessarily you, you lose that quote-unquote positive field position a little bit, especially in more inhospitable conditions, but indoors where you can hit the end zone from anywhere, utilizing the full breadth of the field, you're more happy to, to go backwards because it's not so punishing because you can hit the end zone from anywhere as Garvey gets in front of his man there, knocks it away, 
Another break chance for the Latvians. First pass is back to Brunans. Brunans slinging that one. I think they wanted to pass off a switch downfield, but the communication didn't quite come early enough. And it's Brunans to Elksnitis to make it 16-5, one away from victory. After that early 4-0 run, the Latvians only broke once more in the first half. But in the second half, they have been almost flawless. Just a single point for this Lithuanian second side. And the Latvians, by the way, have only turned it over the once all game, which is ominous if you are other teams in this pool and in this division. That pool's just a little bit too high. Got to be within that two meter box, which you can't see because it doesn't quite exist. But oh, through the end zone has to be passed within two meters high for it to be catchable. Oh, a fluttery scuba, but he got it to the right space for Chiaskas. Chiaskas, oh, that is a difficult, difficult throw to catch because it was zippy and it was vertical and it was very low to the ground. And Abeltinch is going to capitalize quickly there. Kasparans seeing the opportunity to go to the end zone and catching the winning score. So the final score here is Latvia 17, Lithuania 2, 5. And you see there that turnover. Abeltinch sees the moment to strike while the iron is hot. The hammer zinged in towards the far sideline. Comfortable catch. For Kasparans for the win, 17 to 5. Everyone on the team for Latvia registering at least a goal or an assist. So you're seeing there the depth of the roster, why they are such maybe a feared opponents. They only turned it over once all game as well on the game's second point. Otherwise, they were flawless offensively. And while their defense may be, I don't want to say slacked off a little bit, but it felt like the Lithuanians were able to get a little bit of rhythm offensively towards the back end of that first half. And in the second half, they clearly came out. Lavians with renewed vigor and intensity. As again, you're seeing the replays, the highlights from the game. Coming up next here on this field, by the way, we have Lithuania versus Slovakia. So that'll be the Lithuanian first team up against Slovakian up against the Slovakians. Interested to see how both teams are looking heading in to the tournament. Of course, going to be probably reasonably high expectations on the host nation, as there does always seem to be at these events. So they'll be looking to put a show on for their fans out here this morning. That was a nice toe in on that far sideline there from Jurgensen's, I think. This was a lovely little inside flick. Do you like an inside forehand, me? Real sucker for it. But generally just too much experience, savvy for the Latvians. That extra athleticism maybe as well. Didn't really see the, the contested one-on-one -on -one shots deep that often people associate with that indoor style of play. It was more clinical, I think, from Team Latvia. This was maybe the spiciest shot they put up, but when you're putting it up to a, to a receiver like Arvid Janis Olovskis, I don't know how, how spicy that is at all. And it felt like from that point forward, more of the same. This was the sole point in the second half. The Lithuanians really fired that one in, and that's a really good catch with that dominant left hand under pressure. But they played smart when they needed to, did Latvia. Happy to take the quote-unquote negative yardage, happy to mo move the disc backwards to get their offense set in a little bit more rhythm, get those isolations set up nice and clearly. This was a lovely hammer, lobbed over the top. Just a little bit of sit on it into the end zone for Podgoriskis. See, now this is what I'm talking about taking advantage of that player who's left free so the defender can clog that end zone space, utilize that for the reset. And this was that final score here. Abeltinch with a quick pickup. And Podgorskis for the win is going to wrap up that first game here 
at EUIC 2022 here in the Open Division. Final score is Latvia 17, Lithuania 2, 5. And we will see you on the other side.